I wanna hear your thoughts I wanna hear your sound And mama always told me to shout And speak my mind out loud Come on and talk when you got the time Freedom once you on the line We wanna hear from you You got a gun Let your voice shine Platform yours is not just mine We wanna hear from you You got a gun Talk to me, talk to me Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy Douglas, or you could call me Freedom. Welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, make sure that you guys like this video, comment below this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel because you need me. This is season three, episode five of my podcast. As I tell y'all always, forgive my background. I'm actually at my sister's house again because I know I did my season two finale was actually done in my sister's house so i'm in my sister's house again for this episode and i can't wait for you guys to see it's going to be a really amazing episode um with that being said i think we could get into our first segment all right you guys we are in our first segment freedom of speech um i am with my girls Kina, as y'all already know, she's practically a veteran when it comes to this podcast already. Like, how, what, 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 this is your how ever so episode? I think fourth. This is like your fourth or fifth. Proud to announce my other guest, my girl, Lily. Um, you guys may have known her as dream.styles1 on Instagram. Lily, this is your first time on my podcast. I want you guys to basically just like, you know, introduce yourself, tell a little bit about yourself, give your pronouns and whatnot. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm Lily, also known as Lee Dior on Instagram or Dream Styles. I like to do hair. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a licensed cosmetologist. So yeah, um, I'm Kina and my pronouns are she, her. How are you guys doing? How are you guys feeling? How are you guys living? How was y'all week? It's been a dreadful week for me. I've kind of just been wanting to see it end because... I don't know. So I didn't really have nothing to look forward to this week. I feel like towards the end of this week and going into next week, I'll have more stuff to look forward to because as y'all know, I am an SVU fan and SVU premieres next week. Also, it is my girl Claudia's birthday. Claudia is actually Lily's big sister. Shout out to Claudia, by the way. Um, it's her birthday next week, along with my mom. So my mom and her birthday is at the end of next week. So there's a lot of good stuff that I'm looking for forward to usually when i find that i have more stuff to look forward to later on in my week it helps me feel it helps me feel like i'm living out my week for like a reason like a purpose so being that i didn't really have too much going on this week other than going to work um this week has kind of been a little dreadful for me <laughs> how has your guys week been mine has been fine i feel like my week was it was pretty good i did go to the tamron hall show yesterday Oh my really God, nice. yes, I saw. First of all, I forgot all about that. I've never been on like a TV show, a, a TV show where like I was a part of the live studio audience. Like I always wanted to do that. How was that? It was great, honestly. It was a great experience. I would definitely do it again. And she seemed so genuine and so nice. I can't really speak on like the people who are there or what happened got you like but it was a really whatever. great like you can't actually discuss the yeah stuff. and like, i also agree with you when you say that um not a lot happened this week i feel like next week is gonna be a much more exactly. yeah like yeah, more getting example. things done i feel like the beginning of this year was like definitely preparation for the rest of the whole year the thing with me is i was telling claudia this yesterday turning 20 last year i felt like my life was like like, have you guys ever seen Wipeout? Because Wipeout is one of my favorite uh, childhood shows. Yes. yes. Wipeout. Yeah. I felt like last year turning 20, I felt like I was one of the contestants where it was like, okay, I'm getting my gear on. I'm preparing to actually go through the obstacles. I feel like this year I'm actually beginning to go through the obstacles. Just as far as like responsibilities and stuff is concerned. Really having to like adapt to things having to like deal with things that might make me uncomfortable. Like I'm starting to kind of like, in bits and pieces, I'm starting to kind of see what people are talking about now. And I'm not here for it at all. Y'all already know adulthood is ghetto. I thought I had already known what it felt like, you know, having a sick parent, 
and just having to go through the challenges and obstacles that I went through with her. But this feels like a different set of obstacles because it's like I'm by myself now, you know, in, in the sense of like, I got to do things for me. You know, I have my own business. I'm doing all of this is on my own. I don't do anything with like, uh, don't get me wrong. I have help, obviously, with you guys being on here or whatever. But like, I'm talking about like when it comes to even making my songs, doing these videos, like I'm a one man show, you know, running my business. I'm a one man show. You know, I go to work to help me to help my family and to help my craft. It's like, I'm doing everything on my own. Then I'll be starting school back again and working at the same time. It's scary. <laughs> it's really, really scary. I, I think I hinted on it on the video, the unboxing video when Kina gave me the, the treats. Um, I kind of mm -hmm. hinted that like, I, although I'm really excited this year because I'm turning 21, there's a lot of responsibility that like awaits. And it's just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, like responsibilities lately, being 20, about to be 21, being 20 have become so much more overwhelming, especially with school, college, you know, I don't know. It's just different now. Like when you're really adulting and you're getting into the real world, like everything changes. I feel like for a long time, I was worrying about so many things. I feel like I'm getting to a place now where it's kind of more of a at peace. I'm learning not to really worry about so many things and not to really think about everybody else and really focus on myself. So I guess that's why this year is kind of feeling like it's going to be like something great is in the works, working through. Because it's like the obstacles and the challenges, I feel like is good because it helps me embrace change because a lot of times I'm afraid of uncertainty so I try to like predict what's going to happen next or try to plan ahead of time but we're never really going to know. Something touched me when you said that about how you felt like something great is in the works for this year. My therapist told me that same thing like you know she told me that what is inevitable is the amount of fun and the amount of great memories that I'm going to be able to share this year. It's kind of like, because I create it, I control it. And um, you saying that kind of make me th made me think back to what she said. Shout out to my therapist. Going into the new year, I did not feel as happy I, as I guess everybody else was for it. Like I was more afraid for this year than I was like happy for it. One of the main reasons being because um, we lost a lot of people in the last couple of years, you know, like not even just my mom, but my grandma and my other grandma, you know, like stuff like that. And I don't know, I, a part of me kind of entered this year feeling like I just was going to lose more people. So I kind of wasn't like as excited because I was just like, what, what other challenge am I going to endure? What other person is going to like leave me physically? You know what I mean? And it's like, you can't think like that. And like, I had to, I had to realize that even this week, I had to realize that like, I can't think that way. You know, like you really, really can't. I'm glad that you said that. That really, really, that really, really touched me. We got deep real quick. Uh, <laughs> and another thing I also wanted to say, I'm navigating adulthood literally through the help of my phone. Like, and what I mean by that is I have a notes app. On my notes app, I organize everything. I have a planner. I have a note for music and just stuff that I'm doing as far as music is concerned. I have another note um, for like, if I need passwords to something, um, I have another note for like a grocery list. I could always like make edits to like whatever we need, put checks by whatever, whatever we have. Like I literally navigate adulthood by writing everything down, everything down. And it helps a lot. I actually also downloaded a diary app because I used to write my thoughts down on my note app or I used to um, talk into my voice memos app. Um, but now what I do is I talk into my diary app with the help of the keyboard. And, you know, the, our keyboards have like that little microphone thing to where like if we speak into it, they can auto generate text. So that's how I use my diary. And my diary has been helping me a lot. I've been able to kind of stay on track of how I feel with having a diary. I always wanted one. Claudia actually said that she thought I would have been the type of person to have a physical 
one. And it's not that I don't want one. It's just that sometimes it's easier for me to get what I want to say out faster by speaking into the phone the way I do. I usually do it with text too. Sometimes when I'm texting y'all, I speak into the phone and then send. Lily, um, you have a business. Um, Lily and Claudia, as you guys already know, are my childhood friends. They've been around me forever since the dawn of time. Um, Lily now owns her own business and you do hair. Really good, might I um, add. Really, really well. Um, I kind of just wanted to dive into your business a little bit. Like, just kind of give me a background into why you wanted to pursue doing hair. Um, uh, who inspired you to really, like, take your dreams forward? Where does dream.styles come from? Um, you know, stuff like that. So... When I was younger, I used to do hair and I used to get told like my mom used to do hair and stuff. But that was always in the back of my mind, like, hmm, okay. So I used to do it, but for fun, not for serious. And I got to high school. I used to the girls I used to hang around, they used to do their own hair. But I used to get mine done. I used to be like, I wanna try to do my own hair because I did my sister's hair for fun when we were younger, you know, just doing things in the house. So I was like, I want to try to do my own hair. And I tried during quarantine. Quarantine was really like, a, let me try to do some hair. Some of the styles came out fine. Some of the styles came out iffy. So then um, senior year came and um, my friend was actually going to cosmetology school, but I enrolled in college. I was thinking about doing hair at that time too, but I still wanted to go to college because it was like a you know it was just like yeah go to college just do it yeah. and I did yeah. hair outside of school like on my own time or in the summertime and stuff like that I ended up dropping out of college to enroll in cosmetology school and I just wanted to take the risk like, I knew college wasn't working for me I knew something wasn't right I was like I have to take this risk and I, that's when I really had to learn not to care about what other people think or how they're going to feel about my decisions because I had to do this for myself. So I enrolled in cosmetology school. I ended up graduating. I took my tests. I got my license and I started taking it very seriously. Even while in cosmetology school, I started taking it very seriously. But before cosmetology school, I was still making content and stuff like that and still posting a little bit on Instagram. But after cosmetology school, I had to like rebrand everything because now I'm more professional. I like the word dream. And then styles is like, I do hairstyles. But one was like, okay, I need a number because... <laughs> I just need a number to make it a username. So I use the word, the number one. Also, one is like the first number. When I first read your name, it felt so, one, it felt so magical, just like even reading the name. But even for like Dream Styles 1, like you're saying that you're the one, like you're the number one, like chick that does this. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. And as time went on, I start to realize that because I start to realize the word dream actually resonates with me personally in my like life. You know, my friends know dreams are very important to me. So I was like, okay, dream that really resonates with me. So when I want to change my name, I'm like, I don't think I can because this name is just me. It just fits me so well. You ended up putting it together thinking that it was like just going to be like a little username. But like as time went on, you really started to see like the value behind the name. And just like you started to realize that the meaning was deeper than you originally thought it was thought, thought it was. Yeah, that was really me with Freedom Savage because Freedom Savage, Freedom Savage was just my Facebook name. That's all it was. Because back then on Facebook, like when we was on Facebook, our middle school era, the Musical.ly era, everybody, every kid at least our age was like having like savage as the end of their name on like social media and i didn't really i douglas savage didn't sound good and <laughs> all of our friends used to be like savage like claudia had her name as savage at the end of her um name on facebook so i was like you know what 
Let me actually, you know, take it upon myself to still incorporate some part of my name and then have Savage. And then I chose Freedom because Freedom is one of my middle names. So I ended up putting Freedom Savage together and um, I didn't really think nothing of it. It was only until I, I guess, or I would say around like the middle of seventh grade, I started to realize that like the name just really held a lot of power. Like... When I got Freedom Savage, it, it it my dad actually told me one day what he thought of the name. And when he told me what he thought of the name, it kind of opened my eyes up. Um, I don't remember verbatim verbatim what he said, but he did say that there was a very big um strong vibe that he got from Freedom Savage. And um it just fit me. Like he could see that name being attached to me. And um, you know, once he said that, it really opened my eyes up. And I was like, you know what? I think that if I was to ever have a musical alter ego, because like a lot of my faves, obviously y'all know Nikki and stuff like that, like they've had musical alter egos. I was like, wow, my musical alter ego would really be cute as Freedom Savage, you know? And then as the years went on. I, I guess I started to add, it was like a puzzle that I was putting together because at first I didn't really know what Freedom Savage looked like. I just knew that he was cool. He was quirky. He was, um, he literally just represents the fun side of me. And being that I made him up when I was still young, there was a nostalgic vibe to him. And now that's kind of what he embraces. Like when I tap into Freedom Savage, I'm tapping into young me. I'm tapping into young Douglas, or as most people know me as Bebe. Everybody at home know me as Bebe. I sent you guys a video about it um, the other day. No, last night. Yes. I sent you guys a video about, <laughs> he was like, um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys already know about the man that um, jumped on top of the judge and attacked her after she was giving him a sentence. I will be rolling the clip. The latest in the attack on a Las Vegas judge caught on camera last week. The defendant back in court on Monday coming face to face with that same judge. Kana Whitworth joins us now with more. Good morning, Kana. Robin, good morning. But this time there was added safety measures and security. Deobra Redden returned to court where an injured judge, Kathy Holthus, handed down his sentence for prior crimes, but it's not over for him. He'll see a different judge today for charges in that dangerous courtroom attack. I want to make it clear that I am not changing or modifying the sentence I was in the process of imposing last week before I was interrupted by defendant's actions. This morning, the Las Vegas judge, who was attacked by a defendant in her own courtroom last week, now sentencing that very same man to up to four years in prison for his original case. Any other issues that may arise from the events that occurred last Wednesday will be handled at a future date by a different court. The defendant, 30-year-old Deobra Redden, surrounded by officers and seen shackled, wearing a spit mask and orange mitts, didn't speak during the brief hearing. He now faces several new charges, including battery of a protected person, intimidating a public official, and extortion. Last Wednesday, chaos erupting during Redden's original sentencing, a repeat offender who had pled guilty to an April battery charge. Redden asking Judge Mary Kay Holthus for leniency. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, sent to prison for a second time. The judge reminding Redden of his lengthy criminal record before denying a request for probation. Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. Moments later, Redden leaping over the defense table and the judicial bench, landing on top of the judge, sparking a brawl with Holthus, a court martial, and a clerk, all sustaining injuries. Redden's family telling our affiliate he had suffered from mental illness. I just think his reactions were not premeditated. It was triggered because he seemed to have been pleading for his uh, his freedom. Um, a man who was seen on video jumping and attacking a judge sitting behind a bench in Clark County, Nevada, last week was back in court Monday and was sentenced by the same judge for a separate incident. Deobra Redden, 30, was sentenced to 19 months to four years in prison for a charge of attempted battery with substantial bodily harm. His hands, mouth, and face were covered during his court appearance Monday. 
The incident last week unfolded Wednesday after Redden and his attorney asked the judge for probation rather than time behind bars, saying the 30-year-old is getting his life back on track with a new job and plans to resume his education. Holtis um, then reads the defendant's criminal history. Holtis is the judge allowed in court, which included three felonies, misdemeanors, multiple domestic violence um, DVs, um, robberies, and attempted home invasion. Redden's attorney told the judge he believes his client could successfully complete probation. The judge said, I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else because... I just can't with that history. Seconds later, Redden shouted, F that B, and ran towards the judge, leaping over the bench and attacking her. Kina's weak. Redden tackled Holtis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Redden tackled Holtis to the ground and both disappeared from the camera's view behind the bench, the video shows. So the judge came back and he she still posed the sentence for the stuff that she was trying to give him a sentence for when he attacked her. And he is going to be seeing a different judge for what he did to her. Obviously, because that's going to be a conflict of interest. Because obviously, if I was a judge and you just attacked me, as far as I'm concerned, you're getting life. Like, yeah, very biased. So, you know, <laughs> so obviously, because that was going to pose a huge conflict of interest, um, the judge ended up, um, he's going to be seeing a different judge for his crimes. Uh, obviously, I have a lot of questions. I want you guys to give me y'all opinions on the situation first. Um, the first question that I wanted to ask you guys is, would have... Would having more marshals in the court stop the attack? I don't think so. The way that man jumped and lunged across that room. Yo. I don't think no marshal could have stopped him mid-flight the way he got there that fast. <laughs> the mid judge tried flight. to Mid-flight. Mid-flight. Like, mid and that's the thing. I think because he did it so fast. Like, nobody, literally no one was expecting that. It depends. Like, I don't really remember how far he was from the stand, the judge's stand. Like, because he had to run, like, for at least, like, what, 10 seconds or something? It had to be, like, three. three. Or I'm about three to say, points. it had to be, like, a little shorter than that. One of the articles literally said that he supermaned across the bench. Super okay, but I will say, like, he got on her, okay, punching. But how does it keep going and going and going? I agree. I'm not going to lie. It only seemed like two to three people was really pulling him back. I thought the whole courtroom would have been on him. You but know, how was it taking more than two men to pull this one guy off? I don't get that. He must be like super strong. If I was her, I feel like I would have ran. Like she kind of just like moved the chair. Like, why aren't you? I would dash out that chair, run at least a little. Like, I don't know. She I think she tried, time. but because she's a little old, you know, she. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. She swiveled. Uh, she was like swiveling. <laughs> okay, I actually think it's so messed up, though. Do y'all personally feel like what he could have done may have been like stemming from the fact that he may have mental issues? Yes. Yeah. Also, there are plenty of people who get life sentences, some who get, you know, charged for things they didn't even do, but they are not jumping on a judge and beating them nine times out of 10. Like that, that was just so out of pocket. Like, you know, I get it. Like sometimes the justice system isn't fair, but like you doing this because you're going to get, what was he even going to get? Like, like he had a very long rap sheet yeah. So the That's judge didn't you. feel comfortable being like, okay, yeah, I'm going to just let you wallow free and get probation because he had a really long rap sheet. Like the DVs alone did it for me. Like the multiple DVs. Um, he should be in the Tubi movie. Yeah, he was going to get like four the years. Tubi movies he thought that he was slick with it. Like he thought that like the like being that because he seemed to have a lot on his record. So in my mind, that, that shows that you were getting a slap on your wrist each time. Because how do you have that much crime? Like you must have been getting let go. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is probably the one time where it's like, no, like you're not going to go. Like, nigga, you oh, got yeah. That's a you good point. I mean? That's a good point. But do you believe that the judge was being rude or did anything to trigger her attack? Because somebody I spoke to yesterday at work was like, they felt like they felt like the judge was being a little slick in her answers. DBs alone did it for me. I would have been like, sir, 
I don't think it's given walk back into society like it's nothing with a home invasion. Well, what she said. I wouldn't say she was being rude because most of these judges are rude. Like you yes. go on paternity court, you go on couples court. Some of them, they, no, couples court is pretty nice. But paternity court, Judge Mathis, probably Judge Judy, they be eating you up. So I don't think she was rude. She just said four years and he didn't want them four years. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't want them for years. But like but like you just said, like that ain't gonna work for me. Like I could see where people felt like the judge was being slick, but at the same time, it's like looking at his record, I'm not sure if I would have just been like, Oh yeah, he won't harm people. And then so, if she did let him, him out and he did something else, now it's on her. That would have been on her. Him. Right. That would have been on her. It, yeah. And uh, like why like you did these things wrong. And I I understand that like you, you may have mental illness, but I feel like he knows what he does is wrong. He just can't accept it. That's the case for so many. I don't even gonna get into men specifically. Yo. Okay, bad, bad men. Mm -hmm. Bad men. That's, well, a it, a lot it, of bad that's men. the whole podcast episode within itself. Um, I did actually write down like basically like a like a brief, y'all already know me. I've been getting in more into the habit of just writing down how I feel about these situations because sometimes I'll be forgetting, I'll be detouring, I'll be yeah. So I did write, um, I stumbled upon a vid when I was on Twitter. So that's one. I didn't even know too much about it until I hit up Twitter and then I saw that it was like trending and then I saw the clips and then when I saw the clip of him just jumping on and attacking the judge I was like okay is this real like what and the video footage seemed so grainy like it seemed like it was from years ago like I did I don't know who was video recording uh, I guess that was like the court places cameras or something uh -huh. But the video seemed like it happened a long time ago. So it didn't look current to me until like I actually saw the articles and it was like, oh no, this happened like that time. Like that happened like just now. From watching Law and Order SVU, I've definitely seen my fair share of criminals have like breakdowns and completely go insane in courtrooms. And like there was an episode of Law and Order where like the dude literally sh the judge. Even though I've seen criminals do that stuff on Law and Order, like jumping over the bench and attacking the judge like that was so crazy. And I think it really, it really was shocking because no one, literally no one, especially them in the room, no one could have expected that he would have done that. No one, like cursing the judge out, whatever, whatever. Okay. No one would have expected you to hop over as fast as you did at, at, at the magnitude that you did. That's why I'm going to talk to him being mentally ill comes up. It wasn't too far fetched for me, only because like I've never seen that before. Like I've never seen someone do that before ever. But with his record, it was impossible to get probation, in my opinion. Like the fact that he even thought that probation would have even been a possibility to me was just delusional already. So like the DV history alone definitely stopped me from like being in his corner. He obviously hates women. Um, so being told what to do and given a sentence by a woman alone would have been triggering from a female judge. Like, I felt like all I was doing was adding fuel to the fire. Like, I started to sit back and think, like, what he, what he did that same shit to a male judge or like, you know, um, and that's why his attorney said no comment. Cause after the whole thing happened with the judges stuff, the attorneys was like, no comment, but there really is no comment after that. Cause you're, a he just everything up himself. Like everything, the little bit of time you, cause I heard he's probably gonna get like another eight to 10 years for that alone. Cause I think assaulting a judge is like a federal crime, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, The system is already built against you. That was really the thing that got me. Like the system is already built against you. You're doing this in a system where incarcerating black men, that's the go-to. Although some people, you know, may have found it funny, whatever, whatever. It's disappointing on both sides of the spectrum. The situation is just overall disappointing. Because is he getting the mental health, like, you know, assistance he needs? Well, the sister said that he was mentally ill. We don't know that for sure. I feel like if somebody's saying you're mentally ill or, or if his not guilty plea is going to be like not guilty due to reason of insanity or whatever, whatever. Like, you would think they would probably get him evaluated just to actually see if that's legit. You know what I mean? Like you would think, oh, sorry, y'all. Um, uh, my big sis Jasmine is here, but uh, yeah, like you would think, um, he would like get evaluated or something like that.
Mm. You know, just to actually see if it's legit. But from what we know, the sister is the only one that actually came out to say that he was mentally ill. So I don't know. I don't know. But it was a crazy situation. It was a touchy situation. And I don't know how I'm in the court having to have everything wrapped up on you. Having your face wrapped up. Was that so like he wouldn't like spit? spit. OK, OK, because I was like, I probably did that before. I was mm -hmm. like, because I don't remember him like biting her or nothing like that. Yeah, that's, and a spit mask. that's a spit mask to like block the spit. Okay. And I saw like the little things on his hands just to make sure he can't like hit her or whatever. Like that's like the rubber. And so I they most likely know that he's mentally ill because they gave him all of that to protect him. They gave him all that padding. So it's like, uh -huh. I don't see people do that. To regular people too. If, they, you, like, if you show like assault, like attack and stuff, like if you spitting on the offensive and stuff. They'll do that. They'll do that, period. Oh, okay. I didn't mm, I didn't know that. Um, I did see that they, they stacked up on them court officers though. Cause when he was in that little courtroom, I saw like 15 of them around him. They was not playing that. I would have been like, mm -hmm. yeah, I might as well just stood in front of him. And that's if he can't Superman jump over y'all. Mm -hmm. Cause I know seeing her again must have been big triggering. But the way he looked at her through that little mask. <laughs> like he was gonna do it again. <laughs> like <that. laughs> Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Sorry to interrupt the great Freedom Savage podcast. We'll be right back. Did somebody call for the Don Dada? For all my New Yorkers out there that need their hair did, my girl Lily does weaves, braids, locks, ponytails, and natural hairstyles. You don't even need to leave the comfort to wherever you at. She'll come straight to you. DM Lily on Instagram at dream.styles1 to discuss pricing and all other inquiries. Quay Gold's Beauty is a luxury business that sells essential beauty products such as lashes, lip glosses, matte lip gloss, lip scrubs, body scrubs, candles, and jewelry. Don't even let me hold you back. Go ahead and DM at Quaygold's Beauty underscore to get your hand on the products that you need. Oh my goodness. Are there any words needed? Tati Sweet House is open for business and she makes all types of scrumptious and beautiful baked goods for any occasion. DM Tati on Instagram at Tati underscore sweet underscore house to discuss pricing and all other inquiries. Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy Douglas, or you could call me Freedom. I am proud to announce that my official website is now up and running. Yes, you heard me here. My official website is up and running, freedomsavageentertainment.net. This website took forever, a lot of planning, a lot of creativity. Make sure you guys subscribe to my website for updates on anything that I'm doing. And you guys will still see changes made to it over time. All of the links to all of my stuff is on the website. It's gonna basically be my creative hub and I can't wait to you know, show you guys how this empire that I have will develop over time. All right, make sure y'all head to the website because it's definitely given what it's supposed to. Peace out. Welcome back to the Freedom Savage Podcast. All right, you guys, we are in our next segment. This is Freedom Fun. Um, uh, this is Freedom our for Fun. This is our game segment. We are going to be playing a game that me and Kina played a couple of times. We actually played this game before she left for Spain. First of all, there's an actual word for this game. I forgot what it's called, but me and Kina call it think of a word. So it's basically like take concentration. Concentration, I think, is what it's called. Yeah, the game like is like if you take long to say something, like if you if like it, you're supposed to say it within like one or two seconds. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta say it fast. It's gonna go in a circle. You wanna play? Yes. Okay. Like, for example, she would say if, if she says the word is hospital, gauze, bed, monitor, like you gotta you gotta keep going. Like and okay. if you pause, you lose. You're like, out. And the last one standing, it's like musical chairs. So the last one standing will be the one that went. All right, and I think I explained it wrong. <laughs> Kina, pick a topic. Lily, you're after Kina. I'm after Lily and then Jasmine. Kina, Lily, me, Jasmine, Kina, Lily, me, Jasmine. And then you have to say the topic and then you got to do one, two, three, and then it, it, it starts. Okay, and the topic is um, food. Okay. One, two, three. Chicken. Burger. Pizza. Rice. Chicken. Oops. All right, Kina's out. So it's going to be Lily. No, wait, can I just get one more chance? I just, <laughs> my brain was. <laughs> oh, Let's okay. just do it again. Coney is the topic, the topic. Coney? Coney. Coney Island. 
Okay, okay, okay. Right. One, two, three. Luna Park. Cyclone. Nathan. <laughs> Hot Dog. Funnel Cake. Wonder Wheel. Candy Apples. D Train Projects. Ah, I can't. Oh, you're out, Doug? Mm hmm. Corner Store. Cary Gardens. Sidewalks. Oh. Fine Fair. Two, Suki said 288. And it was supposed to go to. And I said Kaiser Park. Okay, so, B36. Bye. 74. I'm out. Okay, so okay, we're out. Okay, so Kina, you and Lily are the last ones standing. So Crackheads. Still well. Uh, what? Crackheads is insane. Hold on. Beach. It's sugar. I'm out. Suki would have helped you. You should have said Popeyes. Oh, my God. God. Do that. That's no, no, no. That's <laughs> everything. How is that everywhere? Popeyes is everywhere. Yes, Suki but the answer is out. No, but it's in. <laughs> Suki answers out. I'm going to start it. I'm going to do female rappers. So me, Lily, Kina, Jasmine. And one, two. Nicki Minaj. Kali. Cardi B. Who? Kali, area codes. Oh, I thought you said Hallie. Oh, no. I heard Hallie. Hallie, Hallie. Too. I, said Hallie. I swear I didn't say. Hallie. Okay. Uh, Cardi B. Lotto. Remy Ma. C China. Missy Elliott. City Girls. Lady London. Eve. Megan. Doja Cat. Kenzo B. Metal? Kina. Kina's out. Oh, oh no. my God. It's, it, it's me, Lily, Jasmine. The Brat. Scarlet. Left Eye. MC Light. I'm going to sit this one out. Okay, so is me and Jasmine the only ones uh, standing or? It looks like it. One. <laughs> okay. Okay. One, two. You're uh, cheating. Uh, You're uh, cheating. Queen Latifah could have worked. And you know who else um... could have worked? Um, Foxy Brown, Foxy, Brown. Little Kim. We didn't even say Little Kim. Nikki, that's we said Nikki already. Is. All right, so another topic. Who wants to choose a topic for the game? Jasmine, like you... the the names you gotta pick. Yeah. Okay, I'll go. Movies. What's the, it's the same game. It's movies. movies now. <laughs> but you can't say anything. All right, so. But you can tag. No. <laughs> Jasmine V. Lily Kina. Okay, y'all? One, two, three. Medea goes to jail. ATL. Hillville. Mean Girls. Norbit. I can do bad all by myself. Titanic. Friday. Uh, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. White Chicks. Catch Me If You Can. Don't Be a Menace. Good Burger. The Fault in All Stars. The Talented Mr. Ripley. Marvel. Zoe 102. The Hate That You Give. If You Can't. If I Can't. Sorry. The Willy Wonka movie. Good Burger, too. Damn. To all the boys I've loved before. The Dorks, the Explorer movie. Aquaman. Cheetah Girls. Obsessed. Okay, I'm out. I don't know how you guys are doing this. <laughs> it's me, Lily Jasmine, me, Lily Jasmine. First Sunday. The Cheetah Girls, too. The Wizards of Waverly Place movie. Daddy's Girl. Friday. I said Friday already. Oh, you did it. Yes, I, did. I said Friday. No, I said Friday before. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. You asked before on whoever went out. You said Friday uh, after that. Roll bounce. The cookout. Lottery ticket. This is society. I don't even know. <laughs> I was about All right, to say Jasmine win that round. Jasmine win that round. Look, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, you didn't pick a topic yet. All right, I'm going to pick a house. Wait, what? what? <laughs> Houses. Like what's in the house? A little bit. Yeah. Oh, hi guys. I bought these for my brother. Saltfish <laughs> fritters. Fish cakes. A uh, fish cake. Ooh. Ooh. You, you bought me fish you cakes, not MP. You better throw down. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so Lily, you said house like house appliances. Yeah. All right, so it's gonna do Lily, me, Jasmine, Kina. Lily, me, Jasmine, Kina. I'm joining in on this one. Suki coming now, so she gonna be joining us. All right. I'm Suki, the original Suki. At that, my name didn't come from a Chinese restaurant. That's my girl, though. But <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Try to lead Jody White podcast, y'all. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it's gonna be Lily, me, you, Jasmine, Kina. Okay. So Kina's gonna be last. Are you ready? Anything in the house? One, two, three. Out. Washing machine. Lamp. Chair. Kitchen. Sink. Dining room table. Fan. Lamp. Window. Just Somebody said it. lamp. Somebody said lamp already? Yes. Somebody said lamp already. Okay. Me, Suki, Jasmine, Kina. Somebody got to say one, two, three. One, two, three. Bathtub. Mirror. 
Clothes. Ceiling. Bidet. Towel. Clothes hanger. Toilet. Towel curtain. Wash rags. Poster. Light bulb. Toilet. Soap. Toilet? I said toilet already. No, you didn't. Yes, we said toilet. No. All right, so us. Uh, Anything in the house? One, two, three. Hand soap. Lock. Sneakers. Bleach. Dustpan. Pots and pans. Pine soul. <laughs> Scrubber. Drano. <laughs> Drano. Uh, okay, so it, now it's just me and her. Blanket. Scrub daddy. Hello. And sir. I was going to say TV. I was going to say printer was good. Printer was good. Oh, yeah. Printer yeah. Oh. All right. Suki Wonder. It's with I. Suki Wonder. All right. All right. That was good, y'all. Good job, y'all. Um, You guys, thank you so much for joining this special episode. I'm really glad that you guys had to, got to see my sisters be included in this. And Kina and Lily, of course. Lily, this is your first time joining. How was it? It was good. It was a nice experience. You know, I felt better than the last time. So it was really good. Yeah. Thank you for having me. But yeah. All right, you guys. So I love you guys. Definitely stay tuned for more, as I say always. And until the next episode, we are signing out. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. There's a difference between hearing and listening. You get it. Devotion, we're making magic.